Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. In this video, we're going to create some awesome particles and we're going to create this nice particle background using a plugin called Trap Code Particular from Red Giant. So you'll need to have this plugin in order to do this tutorial. And I use these sort of titles in uh, I think about a video or so ago uh, for a top five video that I did. I'll go ahead and link that in the video description. And the thing is, I used this template off of Video Hive, which saved me a ton of time because I didn't have time to create these particles from scratch and simply I got inspired to do this tutorial from this template. Now of course it's not the same exact thing, however this is my touch on creating particle titles. Now if you don't have time to create this or you're looking for some cool ideas for creating particles, I'll link several of these demos that you're seeing here in the links in the description off of Video Hive. so meaning these are templates, meaning that you don't need to have the plugin to do this, um, and you can just drag and drop your titles or whatever into the template and you can render it out in a few minutes. Whereas if you have to create this from scratch, it does take a little bit of time, but that's what we'll be focused on this video is how to create these abstract particles and you will need that trap code particular as a plugin in order to follow along with this video. But let's go ahead and jump in the video. Let's get started. All right, here we are in a blank composition. The only thing I have in here is my title. So let's work on that particle background scene. Like we said, let's go up to layer new solid and we'll call it particular and let's go to effect trap code and we'll grab particular. Remember, you got to have this as a plugin. It doesn't come with after effects. So there's a handful of parameters we have to adjust within these menus. However, before we go into that, we want to kind of get the curriculars out of the way, meaning that we want to animate a path for our emitter, right? So everything's emitting at this point. And I would like this to kind of move around the screen a little bit so we can kind of get some dimension uh, on here. So what we can do is go up to layer new light. And this part is very important and we have to name it emitter. All right, you have to name it exactly emitter like that and click OK. And from here, what we want to do is hit P on keyboard for position. And we want to draw out a just, you know, a position here. So we got a keyframe here. We'll move forward in time. Maybe we'll bring this down. We'll move forward again by a little bit. We'll do like, a, you know, move it over to the left. Maybe we'll go forward again, move it up. And then towards the end here, we can maybe just close it up like this. So essentially, we're going to get this just like so. This nice animation this is how it's going to animate inward. Now, what I would like to do is select all of our keyframes here, right click them and click on rove across time. And what this allows us to do is select the last keyframe here and move it inwards and all the other keyframes will move. So we can have this as a two second animation if you would like that. And you know, that looks pretty cool. So we'll keep this here. We'll go into particular. We'll go into the emitter master and here we'll go into the emitter type and we'll set it to lights. So now, our emitter is following the position of the light and that's good that's exactly what we want all right so what we want to do is animate the particles per second I'm gonna go ahead and increase this to maybe about 500 to 600 I want to add a keyframe here for particles per second I want to move forward by just a couple of frames and set it down to zero and if we hit U on our keyboard we can bring up those keyframes and perhaps I'll actually move these keyframes over in time a little bit maybe close to two seconds so we're gonna have 500 particles emit per second and eventually it'll just stop. Now you can keep them emitting, it's totally up to you. Um, and you can continue the animation. Maybe we'll do that as an experiment towards the end of the video, but we'll go ahead and continue to fine tune these settings right here inside of Particular. Now what I like to do here is come here to the position subframe, set it to 10x smooth, and I'll kind of just smooth it out a little bit. Come here to the direction and we can keep it directional. And we'll come here, lower down the velocity of this. So maybe we'll bring this down to close to 10 so we can start to see the actual you know animation there maybe we'll actually bring it down to like three or so uh, velocity random can be set down to zero and distribution to zero and we can crank up the velocity for motion to probably about 50 to 60 and we'll come here to the emitter size x and set it down to zero so now we just have the straight line here nothing too spectacular all right so that leaves it up with the emitter tab let's go into the particle tab and let's start by tuning this by a little bit so go ahead and set the life random up to 100. You can adjust the life time if you want. I keep it at three seconds, it's fine for me. Let's come here to the feather. I'm gonna set this down to zero. So we kind of have these harsh edges like this. And I'll bring the size down to one. So we have very small particles in here. And it's kind of ridiculous kind of what we're doing, but we'll go ahead and we'll continue to work on this by a touch. We can of course change the color of it, but we'll come back to that a little bit later. So the physics is very important and we should get into that, but before we do that, we need to go to the auxiliary system or we're not going to know what we're doing. So let's go into the auxiliary system, set the emit to continuously, 
And now we got some crazy thing going on here, but don't worry, we're going to fine tune this and it's gonna look great. So let's increase the particles per second. You know, maybe up to somewhere over a thousand. Maybe I'll go to like 900 particles per second. I think that'll be good. We'll come here to inherent main velocity and we'll increase this to maybe 25. We have the life per second. Let's go ahead and set this up to three. Let's come here to the feather, set it down to zero. And the size, let's come here to size and let's set this down to like 0.5. I think that's about a good setting. And that's nice and small. And we're starting to work on this by a touch. And maybe we'll increase the size random by a touch as well. I think that would be a good touch to it. So just by a touch. Come here to size over life and come here to your preset. Let me open this up by a little bit. And we'll kind of have this fade off towards the end just like this. So we'll click this back one. What's cool about this is we can switch this to the uh, mask here. And uh, we, we can add another point here. We can kind of just fade this on a little bit longer. And let's go to opacity over life. And let's do the very same thing. So the presets, let's kind of clamp this down. And I'll come over here and just drag this out towards the end. Just by a touch so we have this nice uh, fade out towards the end. And then what we can do is start working on the colors here. I'm pretty sure you would like to do that. So let's go ahead and adjust the colors. So we can come here to set color versus at start. We can do uh, random from gradient and we can open up the color over life and we can have our gradient here. But before we do that, I really want to get into really mixing up these particles before we change the color because we really can't see so much uh, color dimension in this yet. But let's come down here to the physics air mode only and let's increase the turbulent position. Maybe to 400 or so. And then let's go back into the physics, or actually we didn't even go into the physics before, but we'll go into the physics, we'll come here to air, we'll come here to turbulent field, turbulence field, we'll come here and increase the effect position, and we're gonna get some crazy things going on here in a second. Let's come here to the octave multiplier, set it down to zero, and let's decrease the scale by a little bit. Hit perhaps we'll go to 0.3. And let's come here to the evolution speed and set it down to zero. I'm actually going to come back to the effect position and maybe lower us down to 250. Alright, so let's also go back up to air resistance, set it down to 5. Turn on air resistant rotation and set the spin amplitude to 5 as well. And this will make a big difference here. It's a little bit slow uh, on the loadings. We have so many particles in this, but this will condense the particles and something a little bit closer. And that's totally cool. And now I want to go back into the aux system and I want to go ahead and change one setting real quick. So I want to go to life random and set this to 50%. And then we want to change this color. So come here to the color of a life and we can grab one of the color stops. We can double click it and we can start selecting certain colors in here. So we can start building our own color palette. And I'm going to come back here to life per second. I'm going to set it down to two. And then I'm going to come here to the blend mode and set it down to screen. And this will blend everything together very nicely. Boom, that looks beautiful. So right now we're doing good. However, we need to get really close to this particle field. So one way I like to do this is to go up to layer new camera. And I'm using 15 millimeter as a preset. Click OK. And we'll open up the camera one here. And we'll come here to the transform. And we can just use the position here. And we can zoom really close into our particle field. All right, cool. So we need to really customize these camera settings. So come here to the camera options and we'll come here, we'll turn on depth to field and see what happens real quick. And we're nice and close. So we can see that things are out of focus. So what we need to do is find a nice place to adjust the focus distance. So here's the focus distance. And if we decrease it, we should be able to find a ballpark where um, we can get a nice part of this in focus so keep adjusting this until you find that area so I'll probably have to go to 800 here um, we'll see when it loads up okay so this is pretty much in a good location so what I'll do here is increase the aperture like crazy maybe I'll go like 300 I'll also increase the blur level to maybe about you know almost 300 percent as well and give it some time to load real quick and this does take a lot of computing power of course um, but this is gonna look really nice when it's all said and done so, all right, so I had to adjust the settings a little bit because I was having a lot of trouble finding that sweet spot. So this is so far, okay, so so far this is what we have and uh, it's hard to do a random preview right here, but if you want to really adjust some of these settings real quick, uh, you can go into the emitter and where it says XYZ linked, you go to XYZ individual and you get some you know crazy variations here. So if we want, we can set the uh, emitter size Y to zero and we kind of keep the size emitter Z to 500. And you know you get some extra cool things in here so you can really customize your particles 
and create some very custom uh, you know, ideas in here. And I customized my settings just a little bit, the 50x, 50 50y. 50 Alright, now that we're now that I'm happy with this, we can go ahead and pre-compose our three layers here. And I'll just call it particle. And of course you might want to add a title or whatever to this. So I'll grab the textile tool, type out a quick title. And you can animate it any way you like. This really isn't a text animation tutorial, but I am using a plugin called Animation Studio. And I have over a thousand text presets in here. I'll go ahead and link this in the video description if you're interested. But simply all I have to do is find my title um, and just find, find a preset that I like out of the thousand here. So I like maybe this one. So it's called uh, Bullet Scale. I think it's pretty cool. We'll go ahead and just click on Apply and it automatically applies the preset. All right, now I have a cool title in here that's animated. And I'm going to add one element here, uh, which is a film burn. This will be our transition on. And I'll simply just hit T on my keyboard for opacity and I'll lower down the opacity. And you can get a film burn anywhere. Just type it on, in on the internet and you should be able to find a film burn. I'll also link a, cool, a couple of cool ones on uh, in the video description as well. But simply, let's go ahead and render this out because I can't see anything because my computer is really slow with all this animation. So let's go ahead and render it out at five second preview and I'll be right back. And after a quick render, here is what we have. And it took about 10 minutes to export this on my end. And I think it looks really cool, especially how the particles come in. And what's nice about that is you can use that emitter that we created and you can you know, emit the particles any way that you want and you can always adjust some of these settings to you know make these stand out even more or even you know continue to emit the particles as you know time goes on so you have a lot of flexibility of what you can do with this technique and this just looks really cool for some abstract particles so maybe you're doing a title sequence I think this will look really cool. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video and were able to take away several techniques from it. If you guys did enjoy the video, drop a like on the video because it helps me out tremendously. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We post two to three After Effects tutorials every single week. Hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the video description. And always, be creating.